In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with a couple of reasons why your plunger might not be removing the clogged obstacle in your drainage pipe. So let's start by taking a look at a normal system that doesn't have anything wrong with it, no clogged pipes. And that's going to look something like this. We're going to have a sink with a trap. There will be water in the trap. And then as you use the sink, the water will come down the drain and go to the septic tank or the sewer. And after you stop using the sink, water will fill up in the trap here to prevent obnoxious smells from coming out of the sewer drainage pipes. And we're going to have the same thing with the toilet and the bathtub or shower. And these will drain the same way. As you use the toilet, the water will drain through here. The vent pipes will allow air to get into the drainage pipe to keep the water flowing. Without the vent pipes, we could have a problem with the water draining. It's not going to drain as easy without a vent pipe. So we have a drain line here, drain coming up here drain coming up here, vent from here up, and then a vent from here up, and then a clean out. And if you have access to a clean out like this, you might want to just open it up. And if water comes out of it, you know you've got a problem somewhere in the drain line. And you can run some type of a plumbing snake through it to hopefully remove the obstacle and the clog. And of course, you can do the same thing here for each one of these fixtures. And hopefully this makes sense. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at what could happen if we have a clogged drainage pipe that is not blocking the sink, yet is blocking the toilet and the bathtub or the shower. And since you don't know where the clog is, all you can see is the top of the drain in the shower or the water in the toilet bowl. You might have loaned your x-ray glasses out to one of your friends, and that's going to create a guessing game for most people. And I don't think it's ever going to create a problem to grab a plunger and give it a shot, see if you can unlodge the clog and solve the problem. And of course, the reason why the plunger might not be working. When you push down on the plunger and the clog is located a little further away, it's going to allow the water in the pipes to either rise through through one of the vents behind the clog. So we have two vents right here that will allow the water to rise as we push down. And of course, it's going to go to the easiest spot with the least resistance. And that's probably going to be over here. However, you could see water coming out of the toilet, especially if the toilet and the bathtub or the shower are sharing the same vent or the drain pipe connections might be located closer together. So just to make sure we're on the same page, when I push down with a plunger in this situation, I have three spots where the water can go and not put any pressure at all on the clog or not be able to put enough pressure on the clog to get it to move. So as I pull up, the water could come back to the same spot or I could actually pull some water out into the bathtub. And if I do this enough, I could pull a lot of water out of the drain pipes into the bathtub or the shower. However, once I stop plunging, the water's gonna kinda go back and level off and put you right back to where you started from. Next up, let's move the plunger over to the toilet to where you can see where we're going to end up with the same situation. As we push down on the plunger, we could actually just end up raising the water level in one of the vent pipes or in the bathtub as the water from you moving the plunger up and down chooses the least path of resistance and avoids unlodging the clog. So the best advice I could give to you would be if you try using the plunger and nothing happens, then you could vacuum all the water out of the toilet you possibly could and then remove it and then run a drain cleaning snake through the toilet drain pipe to see if you can unlodge it. However, you don't need to do that if you have a clean out and you know where it's at. Because you can see here, if I removed the clean out cap, then I'm gonna end up with all the water draining out, but I'll be able to run a snake through here. And it might be a little bit easier than going through the toilet drainage line. So again, if you know where the clean out is, pop that cap off first. If there's no water coming out, then there's a very good chance you're not going to be dealing with a situation like this. And you might have a clog located somewhere else. 
still blocking the toilet and the tub together. And of course, the best situation you could possibly run into would be a clog in the toilet. And this will be the situation where you're going to have the best chance of removing the clog because there's no other place to go. As I push down, I'm going to be putting pressure directly on the clog. And then when I pull back up, I'm going to be reversing the pressure. And this is usually the best way to unlodge something is to pull up with a little more force and push down with a little bit of force. Because sometimes as you push down, you can actually lodge something in a little further. For example, if you have an object like a toy or something that one of your children put in the toilet and flushed it down and it is stuck there. And of course, this is another situation you might be able to fix after you remove the toilet that you could check for obstacles in or go to the second method of running a snake down the drain line after the toilet is removed. Next up, let's move the clog a little further down. It's no longer in the toilet, but it's in between the top of the toilet flange and the next fitting that would be connecting to the drain line. Again, we're going to be able to put more pressure on something like this because there are no other paths of least resistance. And of course, if the toilet is working and the sink is working, but the bathtub or the shower isn't working, then you could always have a situation like this. And as long as there is a point of least resistance, you're probably not going to be able to dislodge the clog. However, if we move it to another spot, now we're going to be able to put more pressure on it again as we push up and down on the plunger. Next up, let's take a look at some regular plumbing pipes that will be running underneath a house. Here we have the toilet drain line and then a vent for the toilet and then a drain line here for a sink with a vent. And this might be two sinks here. It might be something else. And then we have another drain line here. So if I had a block or a clog right here, then I might be able to pull it out with my plunger. However, if I move it over to here, then I'm going to be working with the path of least resistance again. Because as I push down, the water is simply going to rise up and down in the vent, putting very little pressure on the clog, if any. And then if I have a clog over here to where the toilet and the sink over here isn't working, and I use the plunger on the toilet, then again, I'm going to have multiple paths of least resistance, probably not going to be able to dislodge the clog. And if I move it a little further down the pipe, now I'm going to have even more problems trying to remove this clog with a plunger. However, if I pull the toilet off, I'll be able to run a snake through here and get rid of the clog. And this would provide us with a good example of what I was talking about. And here's another situation where this is the toilet drain line and this is the vent for the toilet. However, let's pretend like this is the bathtub or the shower drain pipe. And this is what I was talking about. If I had a clog here, then the bathtub or the shower and the toilet won't be working. However, if I remove the clean out at the end of this pipe here and no water came out of it, then there would be a possibility that the clog could be located in another pipe that would be connecting to that pipe or another pipe that would be connecting to another pipe like we have here, suggesting that we're going to be better off to pull the toilet and then run a snake through this line here. And like I said earlier, it's going to be difficult for you to figure out where the clog is because of all of the different pipes going in a variety of different directions. So my best advice would be to break out the plunger first. That doesn't work. Then maybe open up one of the clean outs, especially located of the house and not on the inside where it could make a mess. And then try running a plumbing snake through that. And if that doesn't work, then you might need to pull the toilet. And of course, if you pull the toilet and that doesn't work, then you might consider contacting a plumber. Or you can watch the rest of the video to see if you can find some more helpful information. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we have a toilet with the plumbing drain pipes. And we have a cutaway of a bathtub and a sink. And what inspired this video was someone asked, what the problem could be if they have a clogged sink and a clogged bathtub, but not a clogged toilet. So with that said, let's go ahead and reverse everything and start with a clogged toilet. We have a clog in our drain pipe and the water would be backing up into the toilet. 
However, we'd be able to use our bathtub and our sink without any problem. The clog is behind these pipes here. So with the clog located right here, all of these drain pipes would be open and allowed to flow to the sewer or our septic tank. However, that will not be the case if we move the clog a little farther to where we'd be able to use our sink, but not our bathtub or our toilet. And if we move the clog a little further down, we're not going to be able to use anything in our bathroom. If every fixture in your bathtub is filled with water or won't allow any of these fixtures to be used, then there's a good chance the clog is located a little further downstream than the clogged fixtures. Now before we leave this illustration, I want to point out that the water level is usually going to be consistent or level. So you could have a situation where you think you can use the sink, but once you start putting water in the sink, the bathtub and the toilet level will rise. So you might think you can use the sink, or this might provide you with the illusion that you can use the sink, but obviously you won't be able to. Any water that goes into here will just simply raise the levels of the other fixtures that are upstream of the clogged drain pipe. And this could include other fixtures throughout your home, like a kitchen sink or a wash machine drain line. Now, since you probably don't know which direction your drain line is going, let's go ahead and flip this thing around and allow the drainage wastewater to go out in the other direction, along with providing an example of what it could look like if you have a sink that is plugged. However, you'd still be able to use the bathtub and the toilet. And before we get carried away here, if you do have an individual plumbing fixture like a sink, a bathtub, or a toilet, it wouldn't be a bad idea to run some type of a snake through these individual plumbing fixtures because most of the time the clogged drain pipe is going to be in the trap. So make sure that you check the sink trap first or the traps in the other fixtures, if that's going to be easy. If it's going to be easier for you to run a snake through the drain line, then do that. Just run the snake through the drain line. If that doesn't work, then you're going to have to come back and focus on the traps. And as you guessed it, if we move the clog a little farther down, we're going to back up these two fixtures. And if we move it a little further down, we're going to block up the rest of the bathtub. And if we move it a little further down, we're going to block up the rest of the bathroom. And again, if you have a clog in the drain line, there's a good chance the water level is going to remain the same. It's going to be level in all of your fixtures. This won't be the case if you have a clog in the individual pipe leading to that individual fixture. If I have a clog here, then I'm going to be able to use the sink and the toilet. If I have a clog here, I'm going to be able to use these two fixtures. And if all of this makes sense, you can stop watching the video. If not, let's go ahead and take a look at a house with the drainage pipe system in it. We're going to have a wash machine drain here, along with our kitchen sink over here, and our sink, toilet, and shower drains over here. So a small house. Let's go ahead and take a look at the kitchen drain line. And that would be coming in right here. Let's go ahead and head over to the other side to suggest that if any of this right here is clogged, you're not going to be able to use the kitchen sink. And like I said, if it's easier for you to just simply unscrew the clean out on the outside and run a snake through here, then do that first. If not, take a look at the kitchen sink trap. And a good clue, if you do remove the clean out cover and no water comes out, then there's a good chance the kitchen trap is clogged. If water does come out, then there's a good chance the drain is clogged. So be careful whenever you're opening a clean out inside because you could get a lot of water coming out of it. Next up, let's go ahead and head over to the laundry area. Any clogs in here, right here, is just going to prevent the wash machine drain from working. However, that won't be a problem if you have a clogged line going to the kitchen sink. Because if the pipe is clogged right here, the water is still going to be able to flow out of here and down through the pipes to the sewer. And by now, hopefully you're starting to wrap your mind around what I'm talking about with a clear understanding that if you don't know what your pipes look like, you don't know what they look like underneath your house, 
then you're going to need to do a step-by-step -step drain cleaning. Again, starting with the traps if that's easier or clean outs if that's easier. So if I had a clog anywhere in this area here, the sink wouldn't work, but everything else would. If I move the clog over to this area here, the toilet and the sink won't work, but everything else will. If I move the clog to this area here, everything behind here throughout the rest of the house which would be the toilet, bathroom sink, washer and dryer drain line, and the kitchen sink. However, our bathtub or our shower here would be working just fine. And if the clog's a little farther down the line, anywhere located here, or going towards the sewer, then there's a good chance you don't need to worry about cleaning out this section here. If all of the drain lines in your house are clogged, or not draining properly, then there's a good chance the clog is going to be located somewhere further down the drain line. And if you do have a clean out in front of your house, this is gonna be the place to start. See if you can run a snake through this line to get rid of the clog. Then if not, you might wanna to go to the back of the house if you have a clean out located back there so that you could run a drain line all the way through. Because unless this is a clean out that allows you to go in two directions, allows you to go this way, and the clog is located right here somewhere, you're gonna have to somehow run a snake through this line. And if you have access to a clean out right here, give it a shot. However, if you do have a clean out at the back of the house, then this would definitely be my second choice. First choice here, second choice back here for a problem with the main line. So I'm not going to be able to provide you with every single problem you're going to run into, but this is a good place to start and should be enough basic information to allow you to locate a possible clog in your drain pipe. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.